I can do a bit of it. Yeah. So we arrived at the lodge and there was some confusion beforehand as to whether we were allowed or not. And um, Lady Evelyn pulled rank or pulled aristocracy and basically had them welcome us and apologizing. Situation there was a bit strange because we had, sorry, I need to go back to my notes to look at the names because there are so many names. Uh, the, um, his name? Lord. Uh, what's his name? Coiter? No, that's the other hunter. Uh, Silvio Arasir, yes. Durian Silvio Arasir is hell-bent on hunting werewolves and uh, cordially invited us. But we decided to instead pursue other avenues. And while we were doing that, Geyer decided to take him up on his offer to get the protection, the scar of protection. But that did not go quite exactly as planned. And uh, yes, it went really, really bad to which MRL very rightly said, why is it always weird with you? <laughs> and um, But fortunately, it did not come to worse. It turns out that, well, the, the madame uses a lot of hocus pocus and a lot of showmanship to impress the, the people of the lodge. But there is some truth to her magic. And when it came time to make reparations, she decided to read the cards for us, the harrowing. Mm -hmm. And what she found made her visibly upset. Apart from that, we conducted a bunch of research in the library, discovered that there are several groups of wolves. And um, <clears throat> somebody take over. And I believe uh, from uh, those uh, th that research, we have concluded that. Well, I don't think we. I don't think we concluded anything just yet, actually. But uh, uh, the wolves were that we have that we have met were probably uh, uh, th those so-called primal ones, the the current leaders of the forest that can transform into a giant uh, dire wolves. That's why they were so huge and shred our companions effortlessly in in their ambush last night however there also were other wolves uh, werewolves so so called uh, silver hides right that was supposedly very adept at hiding among among people and something uh, something that also came to our attention is the note that was left in our a common quote unquote common room uh, that warns us about uh, wo wolves that wo uh, that watch over the forests let me see how what it exactly said which at least uh, Aroden has concluded a warning to, to be about uh, that uh, silver uh, silvery pack of werewolves that could have infiltrated everything around us and watching us every moment. Anyone else? Um. Uh. <coughs> you guys want to uh, tell me what you uh what you've learned about the various nobles or how you perceive them just so i get an idea if how you you know what you think about them if my portrayal of them comes across the way that i would like it or if there's something that i'm miscommunicating or something uh why don't we go down the list in the in the journal so we'll start with the porter with Balik. well we very, don't like him. very loyal to his uh, masters and knowledgeable, mm. uh, but kind of, I don't know. He's just a guy. All right. Just a halfling. 
Uh, he, uh, I mean, yeah, those servant halflings all look the same, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. <clears throat> yeah. What uh, importance can a halfling possibly have yeah. to the world's affairs? Yeah, well, he almost denied us entry. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he seems to, to have all things very well in, at, in hand in this. I think he's the one running the joint. Well, I mean, at least the one who is uh, uh, doing actual management. Yeah, to a certain extent. Apparently not fully, though. It's, it doesn't seem like he has the ultimate say over what's going on there. So, he, But he is definitely the guy in charge of the day-to-day. Okay. Um, Grayson, Lord Silas Grayson. Did I spell that right? I think it's actually Graydon. Graydon, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's uh, kind of seems like he he was once an important figure who's a little uh past his usefulness. Like he's he's still very uh kind of proper as far as being a noble and and presenting himself well and all of that but uh it seems like the last big moves he made were during um conflict between two of the counties decades ago and he's just kind of been hanging out in this area ever since because he's a little bit of a like a refugee political refugee Mm -hmm. Sorry, at least I got locked out to be right back. Um, is that <clears throat> the conflict that they that you mentioned that he was involved in as a as a commander? Is that when the uh, the furrows happened? That whole thing where they like burned a lot of cropland and then like sewed it with salt and basically made it unusable essentially yes that's the war without rivals let me let me just double check because that's kind of important Because I know I never actually asked it, but I got the sense that he might have been the guy who like ordered that. Because he said that he took like extreme measures, and that a lot of people hated him for it. doesn't specifically say that he did that and i think um i give him to the yeah sorry she went out without keys mm-hmm. um let me just get the timeline straight here mm. graydon broke with um, Count Neska um, toward the end of the Civil War. So let's just check real quick when was that? That was over in 93. And the furrows happened in 93. So I think what it was is that he... Uh, um, Um, yes, so he was uh, on the losing uh, side. Basically, he was he, the Count Nesca was was um, on a downward trajectory in that civil war, and that's when um, Graydon broke with him, denounced him as a tyrant, um, probably seeing that he was. Uh, close to being defeated and uh since he was a major um uh, military commander on his side that sort of pushed 
Nesca to even more extreme measures and uh, maybe something snapped or something. And that's when he ordered to just burn and salt everything that what little he had left of troops uh, would come across. Um, so that was the furrows happened because Nesca himself tried to make an example. But uh, it's quite possible that Graydon um, dissenting and, and uh, you know, breaking with his, his liege uh, played a big role in making Nesca so desperate that he ordered that. Hmm. Okay. Okay. How about Turk's War? Lord Turk's War. <clears throat> Has anyone had more luck interacting with him than me? Uh, gonna... No, he seems to be hungover most of the time and very good at prodding the other guests. Yeah. So I'm I'm liking him. <laughs> I mean, Erdogan doesn't really speak to him at all, so I don't think he actually got in much of much of a uh, well sense of him. Yeah, aside from being a, a drunk and a considering himself a poet and uh, hanging out in uh, unsavory places and provoking the other nobles. He's, he's kind of a mystery. Unsavory places. Because I kind of have to keep straight um, what we had in the main in-character thread and what was going on on the side. Um so I just want to make sure that everyone has the information that they should have. And because uh, I know that I, I wrote some of it specifically to um, each of you individually. So just maybe try to remember if there's anything that you want to share from that. Or if you already did so, that's fine too. Yeah, well, in my case, uh, I believe my encounter with uh, uh, the great with Graydon was mostly polite banter so i don't i'm not sure there is much to share in this case yeah okay um and then we have kreutzer well he is the hans master and he seems to be a very no nonsense fellow at least on first on first glance mhm mm However, I think since, well, most of the time he was on the hunt and didn't really interact with us, I'm not sure I can say anything more about him. He, except he seems to be very much in agreement with our opinion of, of Duristan. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so he's all right. I mean, he, he seems to be the most reasonable fellow in this one. Probably the only one who understands that he, he, he will, that he, Lord Duristan is completely suicidal maniac. Or something to this, to this, to this effect. Okay. And yeah, just speaking of the maniac, uh, uh, Duristan himself. Well, he's quite a character, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and and on top of being uh, completely obsessed, he's maybe. A little bit naive. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah. He he did get ripped off by the Varisian lady. Yeah, well, let's just say his intelligence modifier is probably negative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's definitely a big fan of uh, werewolf hunting. I guess he really considers himself a master hunter. Um, what most dis more disturbing is that he actually succeeded at killing some. Yeah, that's the thing is he's not all talk, right? He is actually like there's there is something of substance to him. It's just weird that he's like he's skilled clearly, but also kind of dumb. Yeah. Yeah, but remember that you uh, noticed how well, scared he was when he was actually uh, well, not one on one, but uh, very close and personal. Mm -hmm. To a werewolf, it's, and you've seen him 
you know how he's used to to command a small army of um hirelings around hmm. so well, yeah. he's not even though he, he considers himself a hunter and he's been successful he's not like the the lone stalker of the woods that uh you know finds his mark or anything like that yeah. just wanted to make um... sure that that's Hmm. Well, okay. yeah. Actually, actually, Erden probably w actually doesn't have much issue with him uh, tr uh, using well a team to hunt, but it's uh, because well people hunt in different ways. But, however, it's still kind of quite remarkable that he is of this kind of kind of mind, and well, people still listen to him. Well, he's a noble. Yeah. Um, the, I guess the one thing I would ask is when we were hunting boar with Durastan, did he seem to be pretty capable in that regard at least, or was he just kind of like shooting some arrows while everyone else was putting in the hard work? Uh, no, he's definitely, uh, um, he's a good shot. He's trained well, um, in, in, uh, archery and, uh, the, his tracking skills are good. Um, so in all of those respects, he's definitely um, a good hunter as far as you, you know, as far as you would be as, as a trained, I don't know, it's, it's hard to, to put an analogy to that. So basically he's, he's like a, he's like a, a game. Yeah. Uh, he's a hunter for a normal game, but not exactly werewolves. He's the kind of hunter, like in our day and age, he would book a safari to shoot the big five, and he would be, <laughs> he, he would be carted around. Then he would get out of the car, and he would <sighs> uh, he would make a big show of telling everybody what all the droppings look like, and then mm. shoot whatever He's a sport he wants hunter. to shoot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it's very obvious that he wants the fame and the, the to have his prize displayed in the lodge. Mm -hmm. That is his main. It like yeah, sure he hates werewolves, but I think like the main drive, that's his pride. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have uh, the warden himself. I don't think you've had a whole lot of time to interface with him yet. Yeah, he only. Uh met us in in the library i believe once and mm -hmm. and just went about his business yeah i don't like him hmm. what's not to like i think he's uh he's hiding an awful lot because he's the warden is <laughs> he's he's just warding he's something very, he's very reclusive evelyn would probably share with the group that she's made several attempts to uh to get in touch with him or to make meeting make meetings happen and he's just basically ignored everything mm. um, except for for this time which we'll actually get back to because that's yeah, where we'll start the for, session except for one mm -hmm. one she finally manages to get a meeting with him and and uh would invite everyone along yeah which will like i said we'll get to that in a minute um because that's going to be the opening scene and then we have Madame Ivania, which is currently here. You go. Now you should have her in the journal here too. It's Ivania, yeah. And I think I misspelled her name too. I think I I wrote out all those names from memory, which you can tell by the poor spelling. But yeah, what do you think of her so far? Yeah, well, I don't allow her to cut me in very different places. Uh, no, <laughs> Geyer has a very low opinion of her. Yeah, <laughs> she she would probably uh, indulge you, Doctor. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah that, was pro that was technically out of character, but but nevertheless, I mean, Erdon himself actually is well, yeah, since he's somewhat suspicious of her, as he mentioned in his uh, uh, in character monologue that well, apparently she is uh, she dabbles in very many different things, and obviously she doesn't understand many things in what she doubles, which means he is in not very high opinion of her. <clears throat> because if she, well, if some of her, uh, uh, some uh, pseudo-occultic babbling uh, pr manages to produce such horrifying results as it did on Gaia, then, well, obviously she, she did something wrong there and uh, started to do some evil spell 
by accident. And well, if you do, do some bad spells by accident, well, you unfortunately are not very competent mag magician. As okay. Evelyn would share, she also runs a brothel. Ah, huh. well, that's a redeeming quality, I suppose. The the rest of the guard tower there is actually an unofficial brothel. Yeah, Arjun himself actually doesn't isn't known for visiting such uh, such places, but well, he, he doesn't have, have anything against them either. It's also where uh, Lord Turgs for is uh, spending a lot of his time, apparently. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, basically she's uh, she's managing it, and Evelyn has not actually seen the inside of the brothel, but she's she would share that she had a private conversation with Bellic, and uh, he divulged as much. Bellic doesn't seem to approve of the brothel, but uh, apparently the warden has permitted it for quite some time. Well, I mean, it, it is probably the only spot of civilization for the miles in those, so... Yeah. And it's a money maker, apparently. Okay. And then we have the Marquise and her hound. Well, so far, I believe we only at least Aragon see seen her only in the oh, the big lodge. So I suppose it's again uh, Lady Evelyn to interact with her. Uh, Evelyn's actually not really interacted her aside from in those those common common spaces so she's uh aside from making a bit of a fool of herself in front of everyone uh she hasn't had much interaction face to face with the marquisa okay all right i think that uh about sums up the characters in play here um and what have you learned so far? Well, let's let's just focus on, on what brought you here, why you're here, what do you want to accomplish while you're here? Because well, all of that werewolf stuff yeah, that's didn't bring that, you here. It spr yeah. sprung on us, suddenly. We, yeah. were, we were brought here to, by in, to investigate uh, the Whispering, the whispering Way. way. Mm -hmm. And we and we actually found something. I believe uh, Lady Evelyn found something actually about Whispering Way. Yeah, she found a lot. Mm -hmm. Basically, a death cult. Yeah. Looking to uh, spread undeath. Do I remember this correct? I read through all of that, um, but I. It was a couple of weeks ago at this point, I think. So, um, they're a death cult. And they are looking to spread undeath everywhere because it's kind of the great equalizer, if I remember correctly. Yeah. They consider life to be a plague on the planet. Um, right. And, and unlife or undeath uh, as a higher, higher level of existence. And, um, but of course, many undead are mindless. So turning yourself into a um what's the opposite of mindless Sent mind sentient. possessing mindful <laughs> mindful turning yourself into a very mindful and polite uh undead um is something to strive for essentially yeah they they'll they'll make the whole world perfect by making everyone undead and then they'll just conveniently be the masters of it mm -hmm. right yeah and i think something uh caught my eye about uh, the, the broken ones now, silver hides now, uh, prince wolves. Yes, uh, something about the site in the woods that was uh, noted for. Uh, I, I think. Yeah, there's a tower. Right. Yeah, the, uh, the tower. I think uh, the Lord Duristan wanted to go there even, right? Or something to, something to this effect. Which tower? No, the, the tower was where we got the reading. No, 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 no. There's a, no? There's a place in the woods. Um, Stairs of the Moon. Moon. I think. 
stairs of the moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Silver Heights, the, uh, descended from those afflicted lycanthropy who in the ancient head priest of Desna, it's long since gathered at the stairs of the moon to pay homage to, to the spirit of their ancestor. It's no secret that Silver Heights current leader had advanced to, uh, to the position of the Pack Lords of all Shadowwood for quite some time. Um, did we see anything connecting the stairs of the moon and the whispering way? I feel like I vaguely recall they may have been interested in that, or as you try I might to, be to dig off. deeper on possible motivations for the members of Whispering Way to come to Shudderwood, you find some references to an ancient ruin in the forest called the Stairs of the Moon, believed to have been destroyed a long time ago by agents of the Whispering Tyrant when he ruled over the Rustalov. The, the ruins are reputed to now be haunted by vengeful spirits. Ah, that would be it. That would be it, yes. So that's one link that currently catches our attention in, in regards of Shudderwood and Whispering Way. And uh, those Volensag people who have, who have ambushed us in, with Lord Duristan, they uh, have named by, the, by name the Silver Heights pack who they seem to believe uh, are making moves on their territory as as the as documents have to have told us as well. So apparently, these uh, stairs of the moon location is going to be a very hot spot in Lycanthrop politics very soon. Especially if the Whispering Way is going to be meddling in it. I think that gives us um, a, a better picture of what what your motivations are right here, right now, and what I mean, you know, because it's kind of complicated with all of these different people and factions and stuff going on. It's pretty complicated, yes. Okay, so <coughs> as uh, Anthony already hinted at, Evelyn has made an appointment for the group with the warden it is the um morning after uh the um somewhat drunken night um where evelyn uh where after listening to ostovaj's long story that he so expertly told um evelyn made the unfortunate decision to to also share a little bit of a performance of her own, own but uh, it turned out to be not her best night. Um, so after she excused herself, I don't know how long the rest of you would have lingered with the um, remaining guests, but uh, if you stayed long enough, you would have seen um, the Marquisa and Ostovac leave soon after he finished his story um, while uh, Sir Graydon um, uh, stayed a little bit longer, uh, and Turks War was even still there when you left. Mm -hmm. The next morning, uh, you have breakfast again in the common breakfast room, and um, yeah, ev mo everything seems to be just the way that it was before. Everybody. Uh, is enjoying their breakfast, polite conversation. Lord Turkswar is one of the last to join the group. Again, looks like he's pretty hungover. And um, uh, yeah, and after the breakfast, you have your appointment. Um, a little later, uh, Geyer and Aroden, you join MRL. Evelyn and Estovian in the conference room of the lodge and um, the, you all take a seat around the heavy wooden table in the center of the room and Estovian gives you a squinting 
look and a uh, friendly smile, and he says, Well, there's the rest of our guests. Well, hello, please take a seat. I, I, so I guess we can begin our meeting. Uh, your friend, Lady Evelyn, uh, made it quite clear that it was important for you all to speak with me. So, what is this uh, meeting about, exactly? Is there anything wrong with your rooms? In which case, I would ask you to talk to my dear Balik. Oh, no. I assure you, the rooms are very fine. It's uh, well the best lodging we had in many weeks. Well. Uh, however... And, like... <clears throat> Erden will... Switch his uh, gaze at Lady Evelyn. Yes, we did not actually come to the lodge for the purposes of relaxing, as many of your guests do. Uh, we Although are... them finding hunting relaxing is something I won't understand. But sorry, I digress. It's a noble thing, Kyer. Yeah, it's it's okay. You you will get used to it in in a moment. You'll be fine. Sorry, I had to check on Frida uh, after after Stovian um, asks what this meeting is about and then to, to, uh, told you to talk to Bailey. I actually cut out. So, sorry. Yeah, so if there's anything wrong with your rooms, I have to ask you to talk to Bailey. Uh, uh, well, other than uh, <clears throat> somebody says, uh, oh no, uh, somebody, uh, your lodging is very good. In fact, th the best ones we had in more than a week. However, and at this point he switches his uh, gaze at Lady Evelyn. <clears throat> uh, and Lady Evelyn, in a flash of deja vu, says, We are not actually here to relax alongside your uh, normal guests. We're here on a mission. We are hunting something of our own, uh, not beasts of the wood, but uh, people. Er Perhaps Erdogan's like it cringes a little bit. <laughs> yeah, could put that better a little bit, but okay. Hey, well, maybe you uh, should uh, team up with the Lord Duristan. Then he seems to be quite interested to uh, hunting hunt hunt uh, sh 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 humanoids. In... We're not after uh, the same sort of foe that Duristan prefers to track and use for his own glory. We're looking after members of the Whispering Way. Yeah. Unfortunately, yes, this certain group has crossed us and uh, uh, <clears throat> we are not inclined to uh, let them do it again. Please. Uh, lady, uh, gentlemen, th that, that, that abominous uh, uh, de death, death cult it's, it's called that for a reason. You shouldn't say or talk about them so openly. It's Well, That's pardon like, me. No, uh... we have to talk about them openly because they thrive in fear and people speaking of them in hushed tones and keeping them in the shadows. But if we bring them up to the light, you'll watch them withered like the worms they are. Well, I thought you rather preferred bluntness, uh, Warden. It seems to be the only way I, to reach you. I, 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 I usually do, uh, I, 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 indeed, and uh, that's quite some colorful imagery you're using there. Um, but I, I'm afraid I, I have, I, 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 I don't know how to to help you with uh, any of that. Of course, and I'm, I'm not aware of any of our guests being part of that. Uh, 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 um, well, it's probably strange true. philosophy, but if I were, I would certainly tell you. Well, if you probably, if you were aware, they probably would have taken, taken care of you pretty quick. But yeah, that... perhaps you've had some unusual guests come through recently, though. Whether they appeared to be members of a death cult or not, I, I would dare say that uh, I'm I'm sitting here with my most unusual guests and. Uh, <laughs> in a long time um um but i i, I mean i i don't know really I, I but maybe you have noticed that i i don't 
usually mingle a lot with our esteemed guests, and uh, you, if you want to ask Balik about, uh, uh, maybe maybe he noticed anything about any guests that came through recently. But I I don't I, I I'm sorry I yes. have you have you uh, if you want to learn anything about the the. Uh, this uh, group, you could of course uh, use the reference library. Uh, Already, we have. Yeah. We... Oh, you have. Oh, oh. Good. Um, Speaking of reference library, uh, we have noticed uh, a certain place uh, that was mentioned in there, uh, <clears throat> the so-called stairs of the moon. Uh, can you please? Maybe you can describe in your in your own words uh, what the significance of of it, because well, obviously the reference books were written quite some time ago, so maybe there is some current updates on this place. You you you, you speak of that as uh, if I should know about them. What exactly are they? You. You do live here, don't you? I am the, the water of uh, the, the Askana Lodge. Uh, of course, I live here. You grew up here, yes? Yes, my parents were the wardens before me. And yet, you do not know anything about the Stairs of the Moon, which we were able to... Uh, well, it, find out about in just a few moments of browsing well, it, through the library. Well, it did took us about I, um, four hours. Well, but, the, uh, our library uh, certainly holds uh, several lifetimes worth of knowledge. Uh, what what sort of topics were you were you uh, researching that you came across that 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 death cults place? and werewolves? Oh, oh. werewolves. Mm -hmm. That too. Well, um, what have you learned? Well, we, we are asking you, sir. <laughs> I mean, I, and, I, 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 and I wish I, I, I could answer, give you any, 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 any more satisfying answers to that, but uh, I, 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 uh, I cannot. Uh, I, the, the, the Shudderwood uh, is, is uh, littered with all sorts of ruins dating back centuries and uh, even millennia uh, it, it is impossible for for one to know all of them just off the top of their head i i could certainly well if i would uh try to find out more about that i uh i would probably look into the traveler's journals in the re reference library uh yes yes uh, uh, is these traveler's journals is this related to to the um, uh, madam you have here? Oh, so. No, I I don't see the connection. No, no, it's a it's a journal, um, and and assuming that uh, stairs of the boon refers to something uh something desnan yes i would assume um and i recall that there is a journal of a worshiper of desna who uh dis he was on some sort of pilgrimage i believe and um may maybe there's a connection yes could be, could be, yeah, yeah. Why, well, yeah. Well, I why don't I uh, why don't I lay out that journal for you to to peruse? That would be very helpful. That would be helpful indeed. Thank Can... you. Sorry, out of character, I confused the travelers with the wanderers. Ah, oh, okay. Um, can can Evelyn discern? With a twenty-two cents motive, if he's like just giving us the runaround, or if he's really as clueless as he's acting. Twenty-two cents motive. Um, well, he—it's really—he's—he's he's got a, a, 
uh, how should I say, he's got like a personality that makes it really hard to tell what his um, uh, real emotions are or his real reactions um, because he just is always so scatterbrained somehow and has this halting way of speaking and seems to forget what he's talk, uh, talking about in the middle of a sent sentence. Um, so you don't know if, if this old man stuff is just an act, but uh, it is convincing. Hmm. Uh, does he does he have anything with him, like any possessions, or or is he just? He has the keys on him, like a big that you see in the picture too, like a big ring of dangling keys. Um, but other than that, no, nothing, nothing very obvious. Okay. Um... Does anyone else have any questions for the warden then? Because I have one, but I, I think it should wait until the end, perhaps. Hmm. I'm not sure. I think I, uh, I think I have asked the, the most poignant ones. At this point, uh, he, he, it seems that most questions would be answered by Mr. Belk. Hmm. Um. Okay. I'll ask Simon one other thing. Um, I mean, Evelyn's been pretty consistently trying to get in touch with him and, and not having much luck because he, he seems to be so reclusive. But has she noticed any particular pattern to his appearances or absences when he's around and when he's not? Or does it just seem like he's mostly... No, it just seems that he really uh, spends most of his time in his office so he comes down um, for the, for, or he pops into the 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 the, the dining hall um, for the meals, um, and and just to show his face, with the nods and, and smiles at everyone, but then uh, usually just disappears right away and uh, moves to his office in the library. Okay. Um, and um, I hope that uh, this was satisfying to you. I'm I'm sorry I could not help you with these uh, stairs of the moon, as you call them. Maybe you will find more. I I I, I will make sure to leave the journal out for you in the library. Thank you so much, uh, Warden. And and and, and 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 re re regarding your other. Inquiry. Um, uh, I, I, of course, understand that you're you're suspicious of everyone else around here. But uh, please don't forget that they are also guests at our lodge. And even though you might not be, they are certainly looking for uh, relaxation. And uh, please don't uh, um, push them too hard, if, if, if I may say so. Uh, wouldn't want to spoil things for anyone. No, no. <laughs> Last question for you, though. Uh, just, just out of curiosity, I can't help myself. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Morden not? Jezelden, uh, maybe? Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, what's that? Is that some other... No, this doesn't sound like a like another ruin. Are those Doors Hanev? No. Um, I. Uh, he he seems not to understand. Surely not a Volenzak. No. Well, uh, you uh, should uh, maybe make a point to uh, get to know your neighbors a little better then. You can give me another sense motive check if you like. <laughs> mm. 
Well, um, this time you're pretty sure that he's just playing uh, the 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 ignorant person. So sorry to have taken up your time for requests that obviously were better suited for your uh, porter than for the master of this lodge. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry. Um, Bailey often tells me I should socialize more with our guests, so uh, I, I welcome the opportunity. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, well, I, I, I wish you a continued uh, wonderful stay. Uh, and best of luck with your um, investigations. And then he takes his leave. Okay. So what's going to be your next... Well, the next thing you do? So I imagine yeah. the journal? Yeah. Well, the traveler. He, yeah. While he leaves us alone, I suppose, uh, other than... Uh, will ask so uh, Lady Evelyn and uh, what if he uh, well actually called your bluff and so it suddenly turned out to be a werewolf and tried to uh, rake us he right here and, and now oh I'm, I'm pretty sure that the four of us could have taken him and besides he doesn't seem like the sort to lay his cards on the table okay Let's just hope it uh, it will play out as as you hope it will. He is so full of shit, though. So full of it. That's a very unnoble like language, Lady Evelyn. Why it suits you? Well, we are we are here in private, so no, we don't bother. All right. So that the journals he said, right? It, <coughs> he said it was a worshiper of Desna. And, uh, and if my very high intelligence modifier reminds me, uh, the Silver Heights were founded by a former archpriest of, it, of her. Well, I guess it seems to be or all pointing out to the <coughs> to the same place now, isn't it? Let's go see it, I guess. You move to the library. I suppose so. It's just a way down from the from the tower, right? But you didn't meet in the no? tower, but in the conference room. Uh, I'll be right back. I have to check on Frida again. Massus mm -hmm. Mordinact. Mordrinact. <laughs> okay, that was hopefully the last time, because now she's asleep. Um... Yeah, so you met in the conference room, which, if you bring up the map, um, is D20. Oh, we have a map here, I forgot. Um, it's D20 is the conference room, and the uh, tower that Madame Evania occupies is D6, mm -hmm. and D19 is the... Oh, that's what you meant by tower. Yeah, D19 is the, the tower that ha holds the library. Um, so yeah, it is just around the corner. Okay, so you move there, and uh, apparently you are uh, not too far behind Estovian himself, um, because wait, when you get there... Wait a second, I mean, uh, I think D19, you said it was... Uh, the music room in D29 is the, the library. Oh, that's possible. Um, did I mix that up? D19 is the music room, and... Um, 
so it's, it, it is upstairs. Yes. Well, that's, sorry. D30, D30 is the, the reference library. D29 is the reading library. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yep. It is upstairs. It's in that, in that tower, but upstairs. Okay, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, so when you get there, the um, journal or the, the journals have already been uh, laid out for you. They're kind of just, uh, you know, not very um, interesting looking. So that's probably why you overlooked them so far. It's just a couple of handwritten pages, uh, not even really bound in a book, just um, um, put together into a, a folder of sorts. Um, and it'll take quite some time to read them. You could, of course, do that together, or you can choose to spend your time some other way and delegate that task to only one of you. Or do you all want to go through it together? I'm curious what it has to say. Well, uh, Arjun also is no stranger to doing research, so he will do research. OK. I have the suspicion this is all connected to the Wanderers. Well, it is, it's too too similar to the whole Desna situation. Mm. And Emera? Uh, well, we don't have anything else really. Okay, uh, go on. Technically, we could yeah. mingle with uh, with the guests and. Try you could go have a drink with Tresk for. Yeah, try to sniff out if any one of them is secret cultist in disguise. But... <laughs> Actually, for once, Kaya will try and get a drink with Tresk for. Tresk for. Tresk for. So. Okay. All right. So while the while the rest um, does the research. Geyer walks off, see if he can find Turks War. Um, Try not to, not to get horribly sick again. What's that? <clears throat> no, no, it's Erdogan uh, wishes him not to get horribly sick this time. Mm -hmm. No promises. Oh, wait, stop. <clears throat> Erdogan will uh, pull out another while, uh, uh, shake it a little bit, and like. Yeah, here is well, it's what you had last time. It's purpose panacea to well keep you from uh, keep you from uh, getting hungover. Oh, um, I wasn't actually expecting to drink that much. Perhaps just a sip. I was mm. my idea was more to I'm kind of well, I mean, have it, a bit of a conversation and have him do the drinking. Uh, yeah, okay, well, if you shake it a little bit, it will do something else, so you can experiment if you wish. I'm, I'm not entirely comfortable experimenting with whatever you are. I'm just going to keep it and try not to move it. Okay, well. And Guy kind of puts it in his pocket and kind of uh, uses his arm to hold it still, because now he really doesn't want to <laughs> shake it. Yes. Okay. All right, so you go looking for Turk's War, and you uh, decide probably to try his room first, I guess. Uh, he... No, he would have tried any common area that has food and or drink first, because I can... Oh, well, what time was it again? Morning. Yeah, then his room. Okay. So you try his room, knock on his door. Um, his room is marked as A on the first or second floor. Um, it's the largest of the, the, the guest bedrooms. And uh, it takes some time before you hear him move around and, and he opens the door. And there's like a wave of... Uh, of stale air that comes out of his room and he looks at you somewhat red-eyed and there's a, a bit of a uh, bit of alcohol uh, on his breath and he says oh it's it's you huh uh i i was i was busy 
uh, writing. Um, uh, anything I can help you with? Good gods, I've been in crypts that smell less rank than this. Is, is, is that why you came here, huh? Oh, no. I just figured, well, um, you have a certain charm with people, so I figured, you know, we could have a talk. I, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of busy right now. Uh, oh, yeah, you said uh, writing poetry. Correct, yeah. In the morning. Yeah, it's the uh, best time of the day. Really? Right. Yeah. All the all the good ideas haven't been taken yet. But why not go out and make some good ideas? What's out there really except trees and animals to shoot and kill? Yeah, I don't understand that. Why do people find it fun to go out hunting? Yeah. If that's why you're here, hunting as well. Did you ask if that's why he's here? Hunting? No, I, it's more like one of those hypotheticals. Like, I know he's not there. Like, because you don't really seem the kind, and you seem different than the rest of these nobles. Uh, oh, I see, I see. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm flattered, but no. It's like, um, you don't seem to have a filter and can be honest with them, which is something I like you. I'm not very mm, appreciated in company. <clears throat> well, I mean, all of these prissy, prissy farts are used to having their asses carried after them. Exactly, that's what I mean. I have a companion that's just like that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that lady of yours, huh? She's what's, quite the boss. What's the deal with her? Yeah, well, if I knew, I wouldn't come here to ask you, would I? I figured you would have a better insight. You have more experience with these noble-blooded people. It's They're not that difficult. It's just a mix of entitlement and some good old-fashioned arrogance. And then yeah, all the anybody gold can you need see that to do like what you, you are want. a poet, so perhaps you see things differently mm -hmm. uh, with the eyes of a poet, you know, more perceptive of the subtleties. See, mm -hmm. um, I think there might be something going on with these nobles, as shallow as they seem. There's nothing going on with them. There's nothing going on here. This place is the most boring place in the world. Now, now, I'm sure you you have uh, some, uh, you know, interesting gossip to share. Can I do like a diplomacy check to try and win him over? Like, hey, I'm not one of the... Sure. Gossip, hey? Eh? Uh, yeah, that's a favorite pastime of those. Well, no gossip, because gossip is who went out with who and who's seeing who. That's trivial and insignificant. I'm sure you have a better appreciation of other subjects. Perhaps unusual interests or you know, strange hobbies. Hey, hey, hey. hey. This is a, she's running a totally legitimate business up there, okay? I'm I'm oh. not asking for anything weird, okay? No, no, no. Not a no, no, no. or anything. I did not mean about neither that or okay. you. Okay. I okay. meant okay. the other And he's, he's starting to close his door and he says, I, I, I think this, this, is, this is enough now. I, like I said, I, I'm quite busy. And, uh, sorry. So, well, maybe we'll talk later. I'll see you around. Yeah, nobles. And he closes the door. All right. Yep. <laughs> Worth a shot. Yeah. Uh, actually, before, okay. yeah, before we we start researching, Erden wants to make some preparations. 
uh, he, hmm. he will uh, try to procure uh, some a, a jug of water if, if for the library to well, to have something to sip on uh, while we're reading and uh, while we're at it he will uh, dip as one of one of his extracts into it he will uh, he will transform it into a sweet mead that will give us make us incredibly sharp witted and clear minded so it will be a boost that actually makes us smarter it will give us plus two enhancement bonus to uh, all intelligence and wisdom based check uh, check skills skill check nice very nice so yeah, he, so he will. We, we will be researching with uh, some sweet drinks and very very relaxed space. Okay. Although Aranex probably already has an item that boosts his, that gives him an enhancement bonus. Huh? Well, I no, think, he doesn't. I, I think I don't have, and well, yeah. I don't think actually enhancement bonus to intelligence. Uh, so. Uh, it, it's different from enhancement bonus to a skill, basically, I think. No. No? No. It, well, it is enhancement bonus to skill checks. Uh, uh, well, never mind. We, I don't have an enhancement no. bonus to intelligence anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so you go through the, the journal, and it's, it's kind of an easy task to split up because, like I said, it's all of these loose pages just in a ledger. <laughs> And um, you divide them up, up amongst yourself, and it's uh, you have to put them into the right order and stuff. And um, you find that indeed they are a record written by an unnamed worshipper of Desna, um, who's describing his pilgrimage to an ancient abandoned temple of Desna and observatory in the Shadowwood. And indeed, he also refers to it as the Stairs of the Moon. There is a description of the temple in there, but the details of its exact location are frustratingly vague. Um, the pages are bookmarked with a folded piece of paper scribbled with a faded note reading, See Halo of Dreams. On page 322, filed under religion upstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, this this note does it look more current than yeah. the rest of the journal? Okay. Yeah, it's like it, it looks. It's pretty obvious that somebody has been going through these notes and then put the the note on it. And and like from the the last few weeks, not like a couple of years back. That's hard to tell. Okay. Um, on a, just on a whim, uh, is handwriting uh, in any in any point similar to the note that was found in our room? Uh, linguistics check. Uh, I don't have linguistics. Actually, or, or do I? Where that, where I can they? make a linguistics check. So I get a plus yeah. two to this. Yeah, it's intelligence. All right. So yeah, this I, is... I, am, I am under it in, in linguistics, so I, I don't think I can make it. Well, not great. It's a 14. Yeah, they, 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 they look quite different. Mm hmm. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. Um... It said, see the halo something. Halo of dreams is what it said. See the halo of dreams it had a page reference. Page 322, filed under religion upstairs. Aren't, aren't we upstairs already? There is one more level. Huh. Well, so maybe ah, maybe it's in the note of uh, of the warden. Then, he, since yeah, since upstairs is his chambers, and he is only one who allowed there. Valid conclusion. 
and we already uh, tested his patience, so he probably won't let, let us in. Hmm. Well, unless we can catch him while he's passing here and he just ask him again. So I suppose at this point we could uh, try to see, uh, to look for references for how this Hall of Dreams thing uh, in, in this li reference library, but let me see, do I have a uh, just a religion knowledge? Okay, so D31 is, um, is his private library? It's his office space, yeah. So we literally just came down from there. No, no. you were in the conference room. You yeah. we were in the conference room. Yeah. Okay. D yeah. D20, and we went upstairs uh, to D30. Uh, okay. Okay. Correct. Um, well, Evelyn will just go ahead and head up there. Yep. You climb the stairs uh, up to that... that um, Trap door, I think, is what it connects to the lower floor. And uh, you knock, and the door opens a crack, and you see Estovian's squinting eyes and uh, his his wrinkly face, and he says, "Oh, I, yeah, d did you f not find the journal? Did I, I actually." And he cranes his neck and points at the at the reference library downstairs. I. I Yes, we found it. Thank you. Uh, very helpful. There's actually one book I was hoping that we could uh, access that I, I believe may be stored up here. Uh, which book are you talking about? The, uh, the Halo of Dreams. He says... Uh, I... Doesn't ring a bell, no. Rather a fan of the the dream, uh, dream De Desna, Desna, myself, uh, and I just thought a uh, might uh, you might have that that particular volume up here. I didn't see it in your reference library downstairs, but uh, uh, mm. just wondering. No, I. Afraid I cannot help you with that. I I don't recall that title, so maybe it is somewhere in the reference library. Or, uh, oh, I'm but, quite uh, sure it's not. Hmm. Well, I can I can tell you it's not in here. Oh bother. <sighs> well, I'm so sorry to hear that, and to to bother you again after you already gave us so much of yes. your time. It was very productive meeting with you before, so. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm delighted to hear you think so. Thank, thank you. My pleasure. And, uh, th and have, have a great rest of your day. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, mm. well, can, while he's got the, the door open, mm -hmm. um, would it be possible for Evelyn to send a message covertly or is it like, if you mean use the cantrip or like the spell yeah. message that the, the, the is cantrip. probably has some components well she's uh, i mean it's all that... mental yeah it has her. so she doesn't need to oh. use her hands she doesn't need to use okay casting time is a standard action and if it's purely mental then sure um yeah. she wants to Emerel's not in the library, is he? Uh, he I, I think we all went up. Yeah. Oh, you are in the library. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Except Geyer. Uh, Geyer will catch up later. Okay, okay. Uh, Evelyn wants to message Emerel. Send your damn little eye thing in there. Oh. While she's continuing to distract uh, uh, Estovian. She'll, she'll kind of continue to like make niceties and stuff. Um, well, I guess uh, Emerald's going to try. Maybe uh, stand to the side of the door. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm looking. I'm looking in through this like this crack in the trap door. I guess so. I would assume that's enough room for him to send this thing shooting through. Uh, yeah. What 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 was it called again? Um, not the mind's eye. Yes, it is the mind eye. Mind's eye. Mind eye. It's fine. One point of metaphor is great. Mind eye. Mm -hmm. These, as your eyes see, including any additional senses, last for one minute per level. Okay. All right. So. Um, yeah. So, uh, Estovian has a hard time shutting the door in, in Evelyn's face. He's not uh, rude enough to do that. So, when she just, you know, continues with nicety after nicety, um, he just kind of goes like, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Th thank you. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, it was uh, very, very uh, uh, pl uh, uh, enjoyable to see you this morning. To yeah, th yes. Uh, th okay. Okay. And um, Emerald uses the time to send his mind eye through the uh, open door, and the room. Um. Yeah, is uh, yeah, is it is obviously an office and private library. Uh, there are several shelves that hold a whole lot of books and tomes, and um, they, but they they all look quite valuable. Um, so they are like heavy bound, and there's a gold leaf on some of them. Um, so they're probably the fanciest part of the Lodge's collection. Um, yeah, and you, well, you have a few minutes, um, so I assume you would use those minutes to and uh, oh, yeah, scan. We, we, yeah, we know we know uh, we're targeting that the religion section, so if we exactly. can, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you 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 quickly scan the shelves to uh, figure out where the religion section would be, and then you scan that section, um, and you find a book that is literally called Halo of Dreams. Mm. It's right there. Huh. Uh, well, at that point, he'll just like give a, a quick tuck on the lady's. Uh dress to let her know mm -hmm. and um, with the remaining time because you cannot exert any force on it or anything so um, and it's currently just sitting on the shelf so there's no way for you to um, manipulate it mm. uh, but you can certainly use the rest of your time to scan the rest of the room uh, yeah maybe if if uh... I imagine he has a desk there. Yes. Uh, whatever is on the desk, any open books, any writings. Let me see. Hmm. Give me a second here. I always forget about that ability. Uh, yeah, on his desk, you um, find a uh, an open um, a book with empty pages that that he apparently was in the process of writing into, and you scan the page that he was working on, and you see that he's uh, 
like logging some of the activity of his guests. So on that open page, um, you see some some uh, uh, notes on the fact that the Marquisa and her hound left early the night before, um, stay uh, and and retired to the same room. And then the next line is, Lord Turk's war spent most of the day in Madame Ivania's establishment, and things like that. So it looks like he's, you know, yes, collecting he, dirt. Yeah, he, so he does mingle of sorts, of sorts, after all. But at some point, um, even Evelyn uh, cannot maintain this charade, and he shuts the door, and I'm guessing at that point... Um, also, your the duration of your mind eye runs out. Well, if not, it can go hide up in the shelf or something. <laughs> it's invisible anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it, it is it, invisible. It says it's invisible. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, and fine size. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think uh, Evelyn really only needs to get him to keep the door open long enough for him to send it in. I don't think she, I don't think the door right. needs to stay open the whole time. So. Yeah, but you don't know when he sends it in because right, he's right, just right. standing down there and focusing. He has to concentrate on it. So yeah, Evelyn would stall as long as she can, and then yeah, and then uh, yeah. eventually yeah. But know, what I the door on her face right. But what I described to you, I think, takes about seven minutes to all take in. So that seems about right. Yeah, so he right. sh closes the door again. And as yeah. soon as it's closed, uh, Emmer is going to give uh, a nod of uh, acknowledgement. Um, yeah, well, uh, Evelyn will, like, once we've backed away from the door a little bit, she'll be like, See anything interesting? It is there. Well, that's good to know. <clears throat> I guess we have to try and figure out why he wouldn't let us get it and how to get it. Were there any windows that you saw in the tower? Were there any? Are there any? Yes, there are plenty. Many, uh, lots of natural light, good for reading. Hmm. Well, I I did prepare an extract of flying if you want. I don't suppose any of the windows happened to be open, did they? <laughs> like panes of glass that were open. Um, well, we, we 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 should probably wait until night for before attempting anything. True enough. Things we're planning for the good of the country. Uh, Alejandro, is Guy gonna, gonna yeah, get uh, to the library at some point? As soon as he finishes his brief interaction, he catches up with the rest of the group. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we're waiting until nightfall, jumping through windows. Hmm, I'm trying to figure out what I can do. Um, well, the problem now is even if we take it, uh, he would be immediately suspicious. Mm -hmm. 
because we have asked about it before. Uh, so I guess we would have to like consult it quickly and put it back. <laughs> um, the question is, do we try to just sneak in and be stealthy about it? Or do we try to lure him out of the room and get in there? Well, we could lure him out. Yeah, there's plenty of ways to, I'm sure, draw him out. But... um. <laughs> But I think, I, I, I again, he'd, he'd be quite suspicious. Well, we even know the page that we need to get to, so we really only need a, a few moments in there yeah. to reference it. I mean, yeah, he'll be, he's going to be suspicious no matter what. But if, if, we've, if we've perhaps retreated somewhere more private, um, and would, would MRL share the thing about seeing the... Yeah. He's taking notes yeah, yeah, about yeah. people? In that case... Evelyn would probably suggest that we retreat to somewhere outside of the grounds. Maybe we say we're going on our own hunting trip or something for a little bit. Do, do, do we have any way of acquiring invisibility? Hmm. Unfortunately, well, I have third level spells, but <clears throat> I can learn invisibility if, if we get a scroll. But I don't have it. Uh, I I can I can fly now. Basically, that's that's my utility for the first level. Um, I could straight up try to charm him. Wow. If I was so inclined. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Uh, well, I mean, you're you're the expert in 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 the mind. Do you think uh, your your charm would last long enough? No, I mean, charm. Lasts. And I mean, e e even after that, would would it feel normal for him? Oh, my charm. I'm, I'm if just I'm... pointing out that people know when they <clears throat> succeed on a will save. They know when they succeed sometimes. Yeah. Evelyn is uh, rather good at what she does, so he might not notice. Mm. Um, well, I could attempt it. I could give myself the best possible odds for it by casting some other magic and uh, really empowering my my attempt and then it would last for hmm, probably a week mm -hmm. should be enough time for us to do what we need to do and move on mm. i couldn't care less if he's mad at us after the fact well, he's well. clearly a lying creepy perv so ha. well that's getting, i'm getting the impression that nobles getting upset at each other is <laughs> like a <laughs> tradition yeah i wouldn't I mean, be too I... concerned if if we well i mean i suppose you wouldn't want to tarnish your family name but the rest of us well, we have no nobility or social status to concern us it, the... What Don't family yourself, name, Gaia? Huh? It's just me. Yeah, okay, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, I'm already... Reputation and status and social standing. Considering that I've already compromised my <laughs> morality and social status by adopting the mindset of adventure, I suppose I, I, I can't really complain about such a solution. Exactly, so if we hurt some feelings, well, and people are upset uh, well, at us... It's the least of our concerns, considering that we are being hounded by the whispering ways and the undead and the threat of, you know, well, the course, destruction of the world. Yeah, I suppose we are discussing this in a more private uh, location, not just beneath, beneath his... Yeah, yeah no, I, 
I, I, like I said, Evelyn would probably suggest that we go out for a hunt of our own. Mm -hmm. and, and that room was just his office. It's not where he sleeps, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Overall, I am inclined to agree with uh, this, uh, well, <clears throat> mental sub subversion tactic, but uh, however, uh, even, uh, well, the charm from my limited <clears throat> knowledge of, on the subject, uh, you, well, I am proficient in Arcana, so I probably know how the charm, sp charm person spell works. Uh, I mean, it makes, uh, it would make him our friend, but the question is, will he show uh, his, well, his office to his friends? Not just any friend, his most trusted friends. I haven't asked yet. Hmm? Well, that's, I suppose it's as good a as good option as any for us right now. Hmm. I, I would still I would still lean towards you know breaking and entering. Is it breaking and entering if we don't break anything? Well, you know, trespassing <laughs> or whatever. Um, well, I can always keep that one in the back pocket just in case. But uh, like I said, if it succeeds, uh, at least he would be our. Uh, trusted friend for a week so we likely would not even if uh, even if he was not inclined to listen we likely wouldn't face any serious repercussions for uh, several days at least however oh, one, one more question if you suspected him to be a, uh, well a werewolf uh, would this, being a werewolf make him uh, somewhat resistant to your spells oh no I'll use charm monster Oh, yeah, that will that probably should work. <clears throat> no, I'm not messing around with a with a low level spell like charm person on this man. Well then, yeah, with with using charm monster, it makes me even more confident in this plan, really. Well, let's go for it then. If you have a uh, if you have a, a suggested means of breaking and entering that would not reveal our involvement at all, then uh, I'm open to it, Emerald. <laughs> well, but, uh, we have a mean of flight, and we have. Uh, I, I imagine the doctor is quite proficient with uh, dealing with locks and such. Not not one of my proudest accomplishments, but yes. I feel like that could be enough. If we need distractions, I can also help. Um, I, I, I would have imagined that the you know, cover of the night would be enough. Everyone is asleep. Well, I wouldn't be so sure if yeah. if our hypothesis about infiltrating infiltrated uh, lycanthropes in the lodge is proven is was, was to be correct well then uh... <clears throat> besides besides this, this uh, place does probably does have uh, some guards or, or they or they don't at least night someone standing night watch in the in the garrison in the tower and all the gates yeah that would be yeah. Yeah. is there a guard presence yeah yeah there there are a bunch of mercenary guards in the uh in the gatehouse but not in like the lodge that they're they're uh intentionally kept away from the guests they're there to to you know keep, protect prevent anyone from coming into the lodge yeah, but i mean the point is that if we are still will if we are tr to try access it from outside they will probably notice someone flying around the tower yes hmm. i could have find a way to uh draw the guards attention i suppose i'm sure any of us could well that's that's true 
uh, so it works as champers. Uh, I wonder, I mean, if you, uh, if someone resists uh, 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 the, the, the charm spell, uh, do they know who cast it? Because there is at least a, a range of like, of almost like 50 feet at ninth level, right? I suppose if they're clever enough to know that they're being attempted to be charmed, there might be ways to figure that out. But, I mean, yeah. I don't know for sure. And also, well, we all appear a bit suspicious. Mm. Whose fault is that? <laughs> that's a whispering way fault, that's for. Oh, no, I'll take the blame for that. Uh. So, I suppose we are at, at sort of impasse then. Because personally, um, yeah, personally I'm inclined to, uh, to ag <laughs> agree with the, char the charming plan. But, uh, well, <laughs> if, uh, uh, if it is called for, I could uh, go with uh, breaking plan as well. But I must warn you, I, I have only one uh, fly spell right now, so it would at any point, it will have to be tomorrow. Hmm. I... I'm not sure. I mean, I, I'm, I think I could pull off a pretty nasty will save on him. I have no idea what his actual score would be. Um... Hmm. And then there's the question of whether he would actually comply or not. I mean, I would think he would if he sees us as trusted friends. Um. But <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. It's because it's it comes down to basically one role, and maybe I have to persuade him after that um if we if we go that route and uh alternatively it's a role to break in quietly and i don't know yeah that's... I'm, I'm i'm metagaming it too much probably uh, well i mean this is the kind of point where we are planning so uh, i suppose it it's, it is cold for for now <laughs> Evelyn is confident in her in her uh, charming skills, and she also can can serve as part of a distraction if uh, if we want to do the break in and uh, try to distract the guards or the guests or something. Yeah, well, I guess we can go for that. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, by the way. For which one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, where we are while we are planning uh Gaer, do you need any uh, less restorations yet uh, from from the ritu last ritual? Um I think I'm right now, no, someone? No. Sorry? It, it heals at the regular pace, so you should know. Okay, I I have yeah, I have prepared a couple just in case now. Okay. So I suppose we don't need the less restorations. Keep them handy. Mm -hmm. So what's going to be your next move? Or do you just want, kind of want to wait and see what happens? Uh, I don't know. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I suppose we just sh probably should try to charm him. I mean, uh, 
Evelyn, in, Evelyn indeed can uh, put some very very mean <coughs> charms on people, especially uh, under further buffing. And, and this seems to to be uh, the most potentially rewarding uh, solution that. So I know we've we've talked about this before, Simon. Uh, I just want to refresh myself on how we've decided this. When Evelyn casts spells, is it readily apparent to everybody around her that she's casting spells or not? I, I think there, there's a rule that says that that it's always visible that a spell has been cast. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a. I was looking this up too. Apparently, it's like a. If, addendum that they added it's not even in a published rule book but it is uh, somebody official did say it i mean there's no there's no visible components so i don't know what is there, to, what the, to the seeing, yeah to but... the, the act of cast, casting there are no visible components but um the magic usually has uh visible components of it of itself you know there would be like a uh uh, it depends on the spell that's being cast, but there would be some some shift in the air quality or like some flickering effect or whatever. Um, okay, so, so ideally, I want to be able to cast this on him without being seen. I mean the 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 uh, charm monster. Yeah. I mean, the, the, these spells are just weird to actually use because, I mean, for you it's a little easier because you don't have a, a spell casting component that would be visible. But I think in general, it's just that if you if that spell fails, it's obvious that it failed, and if it succeeds, then I don't think the act of casting the spell should be a problem. Okay, so. So it's like I could, it's, I could, it's the example, person then is your friend, and then you would just be like, uh, "Well, don't you feel better now?" So it's good that I cast the spell, <laughs> and and I think I would rule that that's a that's an automatic because otherwise it would defeat the purpose of using that spell. Yeah, but I mean, for example, could Evelyn sit in the middle of a, a, a crowded common room and cast the spell on him? And no, no, because that everyone would be too... sitting there would see some yeah. magic happening. Yeah, they would see like a definitely would see a shift in that person's attitude, like a, a sudden shift, and that would at least that would give everyone the opportunity because there is, I think, a perception DC to notice that someone's under mental control, and usually you only get that when somebody is dominated or when they're acting against their their nature. Um, right. But in that in that case, I would rule that everyone gets to make that check in that moment to see that something's off. Okay, uh, then yeah, she really does want to try to cast it without being seen at all, if possible. Um, <clears throat> so that means getting him by himself, relatively speaking, and then having him be distracted by someone else while she is casting a spell on him. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyone have any thoughts about... Well, I'm drawing him out while she's doing the thing. Well, it's, we'll need to. I could cause a scene. Well, yeah, we will need to think about that. You a little bit. Uh, uh, what can we do? Uh, I mean, I, I can cause a scene. I mean, I I have alch craft alchemy trained. Yeah, but um, you know, a flock of. Ravens, um, and prestidigitation is always a good choice. Mm -hmm. A giant wolf appearing out of nowhere. Although yeah, that is... might uh, raise more <laughs> questions than actually just cause a scene. Whereas, you know, a bunch of rats running around might uh, feel a bit more natural. The thing is, it has to be enough for him to actually respond to it, because I feel like mostly it would just be Bellic coming out to be like, oh, no! 
he's it's got whatever it is it's got to be enough to prompt him to uh come out well i can i could always ask him to dr just try to help uh i could ask him to help me with some research i mean i as you can see i am not a very tall person i can't reach the highest shelves right so, <laughs> so without his help but uh, go the honest way i it's interesting <clears throat> yeah however uh, that will probably co uh... i mean Arrowden is six foot six yes <laughs> okay <laughs> I was, he, he was being sarcastic when he said that. Oh, I see. Um, just out of curiosity, how tall is Bellic? As a halfling, uh, I would say normal for a halfling, so like three feet. Okay. Never mind then. <laughs> okay, uh, so if I was to, uh, to call for a distraction for him, I will need to compose myself and get myself a little bit of story then <coughs> because my my bluff skill is exactly zero so i will need to <coughs> uh what's the what's the word rehearse before before we go in i could also make you appear to be someone completely different remember someone completely different in a lodge that is you know, only people known. Sure, but if we appear to be a guard or someone. Mm, in, in fairness, I'm not that confident in my acting ability. Uh, uh, maybe I'm at all. Um, sure. <laughs> Sounds very confident. Well, I I've been volunteered before. <laughs> In my experience, the more complex the plan, the more likely it will succeed. And the simple plans that are supposed to go straightforward have a tendency to go tits up. Exactly. Oh, so have, screw I it. I have a brilliantly complicated plan. It's Since... guaranteed to work. As, as the... long as it's layered and it depends on very specific variables all coming together in perfect synchronization, I'm sure nothing can go wrong. And even better, it's highly reliant on other people who aren't us. Are you ready? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> all right. Since the warden seems to be uh, so concerned about his guests having a good time and enjoying themselves and not being bothered, what if we find a way to start an altercation between them? Uh, Get them to draw him out so that perhaps he can try to restore peace and uh, good relations amongst them. And meanwhile, that's when I hit him. That is the aristocratic solution. Exactly. And it doesn't seem that we, we will need to do much because they seem to be doing that pretty much the, pretty well themselves. All I need is a little nudge. I I like the way you think. <sighs> All right. All right. <laughs> oh god. Evelyn is <laughs> Evelyn is cackling. Oh, you <laughs> are enjoying this, aren't you, Evelyn? <laughs> Oh, no, no, this is a... These are my people, like I said. These are my people. Exactly. I know how to play them well. Did I hear that you were making friends with the uh, Turks? Oh, or... there was an attempt. Oh. It's not the friendly sort. Uh, at least not as friendly as I had hoped. And that I makes him the perfect... The perfect tool for us to turn against the other nobles. Well, he definitely is a tool. <laughs> yes, yes, this is all. I, I think some of this, 
aristocracy is rubbing off on me. I think you could use uh, a little bit of that, and I, I dare I do have this rustic... nice new new jacket. Yes, it, I've noticed you've been uh, taking care to present yourself a little more, and I, uh, I it has not gone unnoticed, Geyer. Oh, yeah, with so much happening, you know, figured it was about time. Right. Well, I believe the rustic nature of this place is rubbing off on me a little bit too. So. Let's uh, get right to it then. So how are we going to use our dear friend, Tresvor? Well, Terxvor seems Terxvor seem to be very enjoying teasing Lord Duristan. And Lord Duristan is never it, seem to be a very, a very long of temper kind of person. So I'm yeah, you're right. It might just need to lightest of pushes. Yes, I'm assuming that would be our approach. Um, okay, uh, I don't know how much of this, Simon, you need us to actually role play out. But I'm not entirely sure if I if I got your plan right. So we, what what exactly? Neither do, you do, do we. So it's yeah. all good. <laughs> so here, here's what I'm thinking. I want I want to try and start a fight between mm -hmm. the nobles. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we can do that by basically spreading malicious slander. Um, Evelyn can pop a couple of disguise selves. Uh, when, uh when nobody's looking and she can she can appear to be Turgsvor and, and maybe uh, knock into Grayson and knock over his drink and uh, maybe make some sort of rude comment to Marquisa at some point um, and kind of spread these things out throughout the day so that it, it kind of just he it seems like he manages to keep pissing everyone off and then maybe we can stage some sort of confrontation in the evening where uh, everyone's just mad at him. Okay. That's kind of my overall thought. Uh, use a little trickery and maybe Geyer can uh, can can uh, let Turgsvor know that uh, the other nobles said some things about him or whatever. Okay, okay, okay. Kind um, of sow seeds individually. It's disguise self that you want to use. Well, I have um, I have my ability fearsome guys fearsome guys which i which effect effectively it functions as disguise self um but it lasts 24 hours and i can do it i think five times a day at this point okay but it doesn't change your voice so i mean like bumping into someone and spilling their drink and then just making yeah i can making a i can bluff. yeah exactly just making a grunting sound or something but if you were actually to talk that would not work um, so making a rude comment uh, okay so i i can see uh yeah grain i think should be easy enough to upset because he already um shows that he dislikes turks wars kind of you know unseeming behavior um uh, but the marquisa without actually being able to talk to her how would you pull can that I, off? Can I bluff to mimic his voice? Or is that too Sure, far? you can try that, yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. bluff. You want to take 10 on that, then? Because it's... Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, if I take 10, that's a 26, so... Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, okay. If you want, Lady Evelyn, I can uh, give you the Cure Moderate Wound Extract, and it will do wonders for your throat. <laughs> um... Is that a slight at her because of the <laughs> night before? <laughs> no. Yeah, she uh, she kind of shoots Aranax a side eye. She's not 100% sure of his intention there. Okay, but I think, I, I think I'm getting it. So you just want to sow the seeds of, uh, of conflict. Yeah. 
in the guise of Turks War. And the fearsome guys works with this guy's self, so it includes his clothing and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's, I mean, there's plenty of rooms in the lodge to quickly uh, jump in and out of for for the casting the spell. Turks War is either drinking somewhere or whoring around, so it's not like you're gonna be at a high risk of bumping into him. Um. You got your high bluff skill. Everybody is likely to believe that Turks War is acting like a complete ass. So it's not like they're going to be suspicious of you. Circumstantial bluff? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's how you spend the rest of the afternoon, I guess. Scheming. Yep. Uh, scheming, yeah. And... and um, yeah, just having or uh, engineering these these little encounters um, where you just make sure that uh, Turks War comes across as the rudest, uh, most annoying, um, arrogant, spoiled brat that you can think of. Okay. Um, I can just imagine him like. Like Evelyn coming up to the Marquisa as Turks for and being like, "Hey, I wrote a poem about you," and he just hands her this slip of like incredibly rude poetry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. However, Sneaking. we need to. Yeah, we need to make sure that that this rude poem. Uh, Fully confirms with he with his style in writing. <sighs> we need to obtain the samples. Well, I mean, we're on talking terms really now. I could this, knock I on his. I could knock on his door. <laughs> knock on his brothel door because yeah. apparently that's where he is. Uh, he writes poetry in the mornings. So it's probably still in the. <laughs> I don't know if he, if he leaves his jour poetry journals in the music room. Ugh. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so like I said, you, you uh, engineer these little moments with uh, all the other guests. And then by the time that it's dinner time, um, when uh, everybody gathers in the dining hall, uh, Turks War is, as usual, the last one to enter, and everybody just, you know, gives him a stink eye, and, and just, uh, they're, uh, everyone's like, what? She has the, the gall to show up here after acting like that all day. And Turks War seems kind of clueless about it, but he's still actually an ass, so, um, <laughs> it's playing right into your little scheme as he just kind of walks around the room makes eye contact with some people and just like what and uh, takes a seat somewhere mm -hmm. to uh eat his meal um everybody else mostly leaves him alone uh trying not to set him off because they probably think that he's uh quite that he's kind of like penned up a lot of frustration and anger since he's been lashing out all day uh, but he's just oblivious of all of that, and maybe it's just wondering why everybody else is just being so weird today. Uh, after dinner, um, the more polite part of the guests decides to retreat to the sitting room once more, um, and on their way there... Um, the Marquisa mentions that Ostovac has another story that is just... Uh, too um, uh, uh, um, exciting to pass up on. Oh, I, you should tell him. And Turks War makes like a casual mention about something like, uh, I was just not as long as last night and waiting for a little bit of approval, but all he gets is uh, people staring at him, you know, uh, glaring and being like, ugh, him again. And he's he looks at you and goes, what? 
What's why has everybody all of a sudden lost their humor today? And you can hear Graydon and mumble something on on his way to the sitting room. Um, something like I'm about to have had enough with this this uh, this rube. Uh, but for now, everybody's um, keeping it in. And then... Um... Yeah, I don't know. Let me think about this for a second. I was going to say, Evelyn can, can tip things off if she needs to. Yeah. Uh, I, just need to, I just need to think about that for a moment. Okay. Yeah, so uh, everyone retreats to the sitting room, and I would assume you will join them. Watching as your your scheme unfolds, and hopefully it comes to a conclusion soon. Especially with the introduction of alcohol, that shouldn't be too far uh, out. And uh, yeah, everybody takes a seat, makes themselves comfortable, and there's uh, some polite chit-chat going on with everybody still continue, continuing to ignore Turk's war, and he's, he just is continues to get frustrated by it, and it's like, why is nobody going to talk to me anymore? Is that what it is, huh? Are you guys all uh, suddenly uh, too good for me? And he's getting more and more upset about that. Turk's war, um, you're interrupting the story! Uh, and he just fills his glass once more. And then Ostovac tells his his uh, story. And it's a, it's a, uh, another Ustalavic um, spooky story. This time it is about the devil in grey. Everyone's favorite boogeyman in Lozary. Um, a sort of... Uh, kind of a current figure because it's he's been making his rounds of the county for um, just a couple of years, uh, just over a decade now, uh, picking off uh, people um, with no apparent pattern to it. But even the wealthy and powerful aren't safe from the devil in grey who's been seen stalking the night uh, in the in the shape of a wolf, and Ostovac once again um, acts out most of the story, and he's really good at it. He like, transforms part of the sitting room into a stage just by by being there, and uh, is is really drawing everybody's attention, um, except for for Turks for his heckling every now and then that just gets more annoyed. Gl glares for him and then at some point uh he gets into the story and he tells how the devil in gray uh was out in the streets of Courteau and this uh, innocent maiden was sleeping in her bed at night full moon outside her bedroom illuminated with this pale go in this pale ghostly shade and then she heard the devil in grey climb up the walls outside of her home and scratching on the window, slowly opening the blinds, the, the shutters, I guess. And he makes a creaking sound. And then he says, and then jumping in through the window with his uh, his large monstrous body uh, um, landing onto the heavy wooden floors with a thunk. And in that moment, you actually hear that sound and it sends like tremors across the floorboards and something really large must have just... Um, stepped into the lodge. It sounds like it's coming from the deck doors. Here, I will take you to the map. And 
you are here in the sitting room. And you hear, like I said, this really loud noise. You, you can feel the trembles in the floorboards. The the uh, the the glasses are shaking. The decanters are 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 uh, um, shaking. And soon enough, you hear the high pitched, panicked voices, uh, cries of of some of the, um, some of the lodge's staff. And we'll roll for initiative. Ooh. All my plans. Always. Always. Aye, aye. Interrupted. Damn. Okay. Um. Evelyn is thinking in her head, my plan, my beautiful plan. Yes. Yeah. All right. I, I, I really do have 39 hit points. The, the sound that we heard came from here? But yeah, I didn't select my... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have a button for this stuff. Oh, look at that. What are the odds? I'm getting the same roll twice. I rolled twice just to fix it. Huh. Okay, Emerald, Evelyn, Geyer, Rodan, there you are. Okay. So, Doctor, your turn. Okay. At this point, mm -hmm. I can't hear you. Oh. There you are. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> I was scaling back uh, uh, the window because, um, because of the sun accident. Uh, Erden will uh, <laughs> jump to his feet uh, and start. He will start to look around. Like, what in the holy hell is this? Uh, <clears throat> like, this wasn't a part of a plan. He will so he will basically stare at the Lady Evelyn like like with with wide eyes uh, silently asking like, like like was it your plan like or or something and he will uh, move about here hoping to see what's happening. No, that's the wrong direction because you you definitely heard it from the deck doors which would be here so that's i mean you have, yeah you would have to turn around the corner to be able to see anything is that your turn hello what are your problems Maybe. Uh, I, mm. I did mute myself. I'm sorry. Ah. Uh, did you? So I suppose you didn't hear anything of what I did, of what I said. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Aroden, he will uh, spring to his feet, and he will basically stare at Lady Evelyn with like wide eyes, like asking, like silently asking, like, was it your plan or was it? So what did what did, what did, what's happening and then he will uh, uh, at a brisk pace he will walk walk out and look around here uh, but he will not uh, hurry into the danger alone so he will not turn to the uh, one turn the corner yeah yeah and that would be the, my okay. turn then it's emerald uh are we carrying everything on us oh, one, one second would emeril have like his shield and spear and stuff on him i think you would walk around with a shield and spear yeah. um, you, you may have a like a like a your your sidearm basically yeah uh, okay may i backtrack a little bit if because I, if i walk out I'm, i think i still uh, would be able to drink a shield extract as a standard. Okay. Just in case. Yep, that's fine. Uh, well, I guess Emerald is going to. Uh, move around. Does he see anything from here? Uh, yes, to your horror, you do. There is a massive spider 
it's covered in bristly hair, and it's 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 uh, squeezed in through the deck doors. It d- didn't have to break through. It apparently just walked right in, and it's it's uh, a little bit disoriented, and um, it's 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 bulbous. Many eyes are kind when, of when you scanning see, the room. When you see when you say I'm sorry. When you say s- squeezed right in, like. Physically squeezed through the door, or is it yes. one of those uh, phase uh, thingies that we faced before? No, it's physically squeezed because that's how big it is. Yikes! Oh crap! <laughs> uh, well, he's gonna yell out, "Spider! Big spider!" Uh, oh my god! And he is going to. Um, try to identify it. Okay. Uh, knowledge nature. Nature. He is not trained in that. So he yeah. can't. Uh, no, let me check. I don't think. Yeah, no. It's too uh, too well, weird. In, in that case, he is going to um, use his quickness power. As a standard action. Okay. And that'll be his turn. All right. Gaia. So I am. Gaia is going to move out of this place. Oops, sorry, I had the ruler. So is. Just like move up to here to try to get a better view. What's what's happening? What is this creature? And uh, he will ready magic missile in case anything dangerous comes into view. Okay. The giant tarantula. Um, yeah. Well, it doesn't really see anything. Uh, Yeah, so there's some of the the staff um, that is just as far away as Emerald, I guess. So it's a 50-50 chance where they're going to go. Low is Emerald, high is the staff. It's going after the staff. So it's moving south, and it's essentially... uh, Don't have to roll for that. It's just... um, Munching uh, on people. Yeah, it's just biting down on one of the um, kitchen hands and just... You know, killing it instantly. It's it's <clears throat> giant mandibles are just crushing the young um, girl. I think is one of the kitchen hands. No, that's very unfortunate. Evelyn. Uh, she's like, like confused and frightened, like everyone else, but also very, very annoyed. Uh, to have her plans interrupted, so she she comes stalking out here, going, "What could that possibly be?" Where does she walk? Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think she's able to get there. Um, yeah. And Still hearing hmm? hearing screams and such, uh, she's probably going to just. Uh, touch Emerald on the back and implant a uh, trick in him, a mesmerist trick. And that's her turn. Okay. Or next. Okay. <clears throat> At this point, I suppose I will uh, try to round the corner using all my action. 20, uh, yeah, and that's probably it. On the other hand, I am I probably don't carry all my stuff right now, so my movement is 30 feet, so it will be somewhere here. So he will, wait. Like, <coughs> walk right here, 
see the thing like oh my god and um well i, I think i will try to uh, re recognize it as well if like if we can mm -hmm. uh, nature. because uh, I, actually i do have knowledge nature as my class skill Twenty-four. Well, this is a giant spider. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a, but you recognize it more specifically as a tarantula, um, and even though it is of this gargantuan size, you don't have any reason to believe that it's magical. There are actual natural animals that grow to this size, um, so you think that's what it is. And it is, uh, by for all intents and purposes, it is still a tarantula, so you expect poison. Mm -hmm. And you expect it to be able to use um, uh, a, a ranged attack of sorts by throwing some barbed hairs from its back at a creature, um, which, can, which can cause a very, very uh, uh, bad nausea. nausea. I'm not right. sure if actual tarantulas can do that, but I guess so. As far as I remember, actual tarantulas don't actually have poison, but their hairs are actually are very al allergic or, or something mm -hmm. like this. So yeah, uh, so Doctor Ernax will like l turn the corner, run uh, full tilt, like oh my god, it's a giant spider, and he will uh, for his last five feet, he will hide behind the. Uh, behind this, well, what's the it's section of wall? Yeah, it's like a wall yeah. section. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, MRL. Uh, MRL is going to move over here. Ah, <sighs> as a first step, and then. Uh, well, he's not much use in combat uh, without his special gear. So I think he'll just um, ready an attack here if it moves back this way. Okay, but there is more staff so south, right? There's like the kitchen and there's... Being eaten. Uh, are, are you appealing to his... Uh, to his... Uh, soldier senses <laughs> the uh, sense of uh, valor and protecting yeah uh, how does that work uh yeah he he could do that he moves in yeah which would trigger i yes. imagine Correct, because of course the spider has an enormous reach, and actually, when you leave this square, it attacks you um, with a sort of like like a leaping attack, trying to bite you. Uh, Thirty-three to hit. For yeah. Uh, Twenty-seven points plus a forty-six. Plus how much poison? Fortitude save. Fortitude save. Okay. Uh, Twenty-two. Okay. And th that was two uh, two moves. Uh, he's actually hasted now, so that was one move. Oh, nice! Right, yeah. And he gets to stab the thing once with his. Uh, sword mm -hmm. let's see just the first one uh yeah but the pain is immense and the creature's skin is thick and you do not cut through its strange vermin body gaia Sorry, this is as far as I can move. And um, 
I just hear Emerald screaming and fighting, right? I yeah. suppose. But knowing that I am very squishy, I will refrain from turning the corner. Okay. Any standard? And you can uh, get? yeah, just raiding a magic missile again, just in case. You have no spells, but the longer duration that could be useful. Well, I'm looking, but. I think I need to be able to see the creature. Yeah, like I, I need, I need to have line of sight. No. If you want to attack, yeah, but like a summoning spell, maybe or. Ah, but I'm saving my spells because I have something I had planned. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, then the tarantula's turn comes up, and of course, now that there's a victim right next to it, it's going to try to bite you. Sing yeah. oh, natural one. Ooh. Um, you live to die another day. <laughs> Evelyn. Uh, yeah, Evelyn. Okay. Do you think you can trip it? Because as far as I can get, um, I'm going to need to use. Can I see the spider from here? Is the fireplace blocking view? I mean, it's you can see it, too. obviously. Yeah, there's yeah. plenty of spider. OK, I will gaze at it. Uh, so I'm at least contributing in some small way. And I'm also going to use a standard action to implant another uh, trick in myself. Okay, so the spider is immune to mind-affecting effects being a vermin? Does that... The gaze, the gaze doesn't matter. Okay, good. Okay. Spells it does, but not the gaze. Okay. And that's your turn? That's my turn. All right, doctor. Okay, I think right now I will prioritize, prioritize uh, keeping Emeril alive. So a uh, doctor will take a couple steps forward and I will use my healing bomb on Emerald by putting Ooh. Uh, by putting my cure serious wound no uh, my hi highest level healing spell cure serious wounds into a bomb and throwing it at him. Ex well, I suppose I should exclude the giant tarantula, but giant tarantula can is in full hit points right now. So yes, uh, I suppose I I should attack here, right? Well, uh, uh, Emerald does not have much in the way of such easy. Healing bomb. Uh, creature that takes their their key from healing bomb is healed. So yes, I I will have to attack you. Um, he just throw some healing at him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be a, an attack from my bomb. This one. Seventeen. Yeah. That's good. That's not. You, you don't take fire damage, but instead you take this. Oh yes. Nice. 24. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's very good. Okay, and then it's your turn, MRL. Uh so first of, all, is, yeah, yeah. first of all, fortitude save. Okay. Um also when MRL starts his turn in that square, a uh an illusory duplicate of Evelyn will appear on the opposite side of the spider, granting him flanking. Nice. He'll need it because he takes three points of strength damage. Oh, oh. no. Right. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I knew I will, uh, I will, we will need those less restorations. Huh? How convenient that they prepare them. Yeah, you feel um, the strength being sapped because of obvious the poison. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm think. I'm thinking that Emeril now looks just as strong as Geiger. Come on. So, uh, 
he is going to uh, pum, 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 use his uh, what, what's it called? Certain insight as a swift action to grant himself a plus three on the next roll. And then he's going to full attack this thing. Simon, I don't suppose that poison is supernatural or, or rather it's spell like. No, it's okay. uh, as natural as it gets. That sounds good. Oh, that's yeah. a miss and a miss and a miss. Yeah. And the haste is a miss too. Yeah. Ooh, that looks terrifying. Gaia. Gaia hobbles towards the corner, gets a view. Pulls out this small, curious, wrinkled little fear. Produce a needle. And you can see it's an eyeball and just pokes it. Now scream for me. Where, where do you keep getting these things? And I cast Howling Agony. Howling Agony? Yes. One living creature per level. Uh, School you send racking pains through the target's bodies. Because of the pain, affected creatures take a minus two penalty to AC attacks, melee damage, and reflex saving throws. Must succeed at a concentration check. Uh, however, if an affected creature spends a move action screaming as loudly as possible, it can act without any other penalties for the remainder of its turn. Screaming includes any vocal. Can it turn around to the scream? Creatures <laughs> 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 <Just, laughs> that cannot scream suffer the full effect. Okay, well, can a tarantula <laughs> make don't, a sound? Don't Google screaming spiders, please. <laughs> <laughs> that that sounds like a risky Google. Uh. You, you have been oh worried. god there are videos that, that, that <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are uh, sounds well now you, okay but um now your innocence has been lost yeah i'm not gonna listen to those uh, but it it can make sounds so but first it of all it has scream. to scream uh spell dc what kind of save is oh 42 there it is yeah, it's gonna make that anyway. I think that's it. yeah. All right. Okay, and then hey, don't this... don't the... test its fortitude. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's huge, obviously. Um, so its turn comes up and it bites twenty to hit Emerald. Yep. I that no. hits. Emerald right. does not have his shield on him. Uh, and the haste does not give you enough. For uh... him. Um, let me see. see without the shield it's, mm, it's 19 oh, so it's the haste. 19, but with a, a plus two from the haste so that's a 21 Oof. Nice. Oh, just misses so it's, yeah, it's, it's a bit, way Oof. too close plus two from the haste. Um, and Evelyn uh, Evelyn at this point realizing what they're up against uh, and just how useless she is in the face of vermin um she's she's, she's just shouting in in frustration at this point i can't do anything with spiders <laughs> <laughs> and throw a shoe at it she she just keeps screaming montiano weapons hoping that he's somewhere near enough to hear mm -hmm. um and uh she's gonna Well, that's... she's going to step up so she at least has a slightly better view of the situation. And, um, oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. She's actually going to do this. You she's can... not going to step yet. Um, she's going to touch Geyer and implant him with a trick. I'm saying, would you say it's fair, Simon, to say that she used two for her skullduggery earlier in the day? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Seems so she's still, right. got, she's still got a few left in her. Um, she implants Geyer with a trick, and 
Oh, then she's going to move up. Where? To there. Whoa. Um, tumbling or anything like that? She's not an acrobat. Yeah. Well, okay. Your call. But she does wear her armor literally at all times. So twenty seven. Uh, she she's also going as she's being attacked. She's going to trigger her mesmerist trick implanted in herself, creating two illusory doubles to appear. Okay, so, so. it's a one d one out of three chance that she's being hit at all. Yeah. Okay, so the uh, one hits you. God. <laughs> <laughs> that's 32 points of damage and, mm. and uh, fortitude save oh no one in three really one in three well uh, the good news you have two illusionary doubles left now that can be <laughs> so... yeah they're still there yeah, oh god it's don't think good. don't think of the HP bar as half empty. Yeah. Okay, I'm just uh, gonna leave this here for now. Is okay. it is it, is it a disease? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Okay, so was that your turn? That was it. Standard action move. All the actions. Okay. Um, the next moment. Kreutzer storms in through the doors. I didn't actually bother making a token for him because my Photoshop skills are lacking. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he's not uh, armored. He's He doesn't look uh, the, the way that he looked when he, you were out with him in the woods, you know, all, all dressed up in his, in his uh, hunter's outfit or something. He looks like he basically just got out of, out of bed grabbed his bow and ran after um this thing and um yeah he bursts into the hallway and then sets a, a rapid oh, yeah sets a, fires off a shot <laughs> uh wait a second I need to find his I need to find a step log. There we are. Plus 10. Oh, but that's probably a point blank. Nope, doesn't matter. So he misses, but he's here. <laughs> um, yeah, you see on the far side of, of the spider, uh, you see some of the staff, um, the, the cook, uh, Laddie Moore and um, the other Scullion, um, the boy from the kitchen, you see them like panicking, uh, running away from the spider. They had obviously also come to check out what the noise was, but now they're, they're just running away. Uh, all the other guests that had been in the sitting room with you had also, um, um, you know, w rounded the corner to see what's going on, but. The Marquisa almost uh, falls, you know, almost faints. Uh, Ostovac is just frozen in um, in in fear. The Margrave uh, is shocked, um, but keeps his resolve, and he's just, you know, cursing that he didn't bring a weapon. Um, Turks War is is in the back of the group, also sort of panicking, and Duristan is nowhere to be seen. Of course not. Mm -hmm. Typical. Doctor. All right. Uh, doctor then will take a step forward, like with a word like, "Well, I have something better than a than a slipper to throw at this thing," and he will throw a bomb with, uh, "You like get clear." And, well, since I have my precise bombs, I will exclude, well, everyone friendly from from the blast, except the spider. It's only the first one, because I don't have fast bombs. 
Its yeah. touch AC is seven, so I think I, uh, think I got it. Yeah. I think you got it. So that's seventeen points with the first bomb. Second. Twenty no, no, with no, the no, second. No. Second doesn't work. <clears throat> second doesn't work. Okay. Evelyn is gonna uh, use her stare to tack three more points of damage onto that. All right. Okay. Is it range twenty? Uh, where's my alchemist? Range, incre I mean, range increment to, 20, uh, range so it doesn't, I mean, touch AC7, come on. <laughs> okay, I think as long as you don't roll a 1, you'll be fine. All right. MRL. Uh, is just going to try to keep this thing distracted. Oh, first by fortitude taking save? More fortitude saves, of course. <laughs> yes. Great. So... Yeah, it's just becoming more and more exhausting, but you, um, you you bite down hard and you muster all your strength, one point of strength damage. Oh, wow. Uh, well, he's going to just take total defense, hope this thing doesn't bite his head clean off. Oof. Geyer. Geyer produces a small candle that he lights. Oh, sorry, closed it. And tiny bag and a small candle lights it, and from the ground starts bubbling a skeleton. Okay, uh, it, it doesn't show up right this turn. Yeah, no, it takes uh, takes a turn, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. But it's it's going to materialize over yeah, the, so. the course of the next round. Basically, guy is just hunched up, taking his little bag, lighting the candle uttering this incantation with this eerie energy mm. glowing around him. All right. Okay. Um, the tarantula, meanwhile, uh, well, it has a victim in front of it, so it's just going to try to eat that. And it pieces. Ooh. It... <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, Evelyn. Fortune the save, elf please. definitely dodges it. Mm -hmm. He was ready for that. Okay, so Evelyn, you take one point of strength damage, and then it's your turn. Not great. Um, does she have any sign that Montianu heard her? Well, I mean, he's probably upstairs in his room, so it's going to take him a round or two to get okay. here. Yes, just just wondering. Yeah. Um, she is Ooh, going to implant another trick in MRL, touching him in the back, and use her move action to draw out uh, her wand of inflict wounds. And I think that's it. All right, Kreuzer, standing where he is, um, fires a rapid barrage of arrows. Uh, okay, missing, then hitting, and the last one... Whoops, sorry. And the last one also hit hitting. That's... Uh, 2d8 plus 8. Whoa. I've got to check if there's any additional damage. No, he's not really. It's not his favorite enemy or anything like that. So that's just 17 points of damage from the two shots, two arrows that hit. Nice. And Doctor. All right. Well, it uh, seems to be working, so I, he will continue doing just what he did last time, and he will throw another bomb at, at the spider. All right. I think I will need to find how to disable. Okay, 11. That's dangerously yeah, seven, close. 17 points of damage. Yeah, dangerously and close to actually fail. Evelyn will once again add another three points. Nice. 
um, MRL. We'll continue with his very mesmerizing way of of screaming in pain while dodging spider bite. <laughs> okay, fortitude save. Another one point of fort uh, strength damage. Uh, his beautiful blade is now almost too heavy to to lift. No, Gaia. Sorry. So my skeleton is now materialized. Yes. Uh, do we have a skeleton in here for you? I guess not. Oh, summoned creatures, human skeleton. There it is. Where do you want it to appear? Um, yeah, as close to the spider as possible. So something so, like this. Yeah. Okay. So I could have it attack right away if possible. Yes, it can. You should be able to use its sheet, I think. Yes. Where is the sheet? Aha, here we go. So, yes, it will attack right away. It's broken scimitar as it chops. This, and, it's, yeah. But no, it's, it's a skeleton. It's, it's jerky, <laughs> jerky yes. movements fail to bring enough momentum behind the swing. Yeah, to actually it breaks the sword it. down and it just kind of bounces back. Like, God, mm -hmm. you creature, put some muscle into it. But you still have your turn, so you can still cast a spell or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then from here, I will cast... Hmm. I know. Sorry, the one I was considering, they will not work. Hoopa! Magic missile. Cool. Mm. And yeah, watch the damage. Eight points of damage as the missiles, of course, hit their mark. Uh, the tarantula just sort of like notices that there's something. Uh, a new threat in town. Yeah, that there's something trying to, to get uh, under its skin. So it's just kind of offhandedly, um, you know, bring its, its mandibles down on the skeleton and it just crushes it. Just, you know, skeleton goes up in bone dust. Fine. One attack against the skeleton is one less attack against Emerald. Exactly. Um, and then Evelyn's turn comes up, and uh, you hear the heavy footsteps of your companion um, rush down the staircase. I actually have to figure out which one is the one that connects to your place, but it sounds like he's going to be here soon. Okay. Um, in the meantime, Evelyn is going to... There's not a lot she can do to help MRL at this point. So she's going to five foot step back. And uh, use her wand on herself. And that will be her turn. Mm -hmm. And next up is Kreutzer again. What's what is that? So, oh, um, okay. Let me just figure out the initiative here. There we go. And then it's Kreutzer's turn, and he's going to. Are you kidding me? He's going to roll another rapid shot. Mm -hmm. uh, hitting with the first one, which means it's 1d8 plus 4 damage, I think. 1d8 plus 4, yes, exactly. For 5 points of damage, and the other mm -hmm. two arrows miss, unfortunately. Wonderful.
Um, okay. It's fine. Yeah. Then it's the doctor's turn. Well, Arnax will also take a step to have a more clear line of fire, and he will just continue f throwing d down hi all his. Sub wait, wait, what? Oh. What? Dristan Dur appeared. Ah, uh, sorry. That shouldn't have happened. I just needed his picture. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Suddenly, while Duristian appeared. <laughs> so, yeah. Boom. Now, this is good. I like this attack. 28. And I like this damage. So, uh, 28 is hit, of course, for 22 points of damage. Wait. Why does it attack twice? I wonder. I need to disable that thing. So. I think it does it automatically if you yeah. if you have uh, an iterative. Yeah. Add, yeah. Oops, sorry, add no. three, add three to that damage as well. Again. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there is a way to turn that off, Carnus. Um, no. But yeah. I'll find it. MRL. Fortitude. Fortitude. Correct. And that means one point of strength damage. At least I consistently roll really poorly for that. <sighs> Can I have some pity, please? <laughs> okay, so your turn. Uh, well, Emeron is just trying to focus on keeping this heavy sword up, mm -hmm. not getting crushed. Okay. Gaia. I will try and summer another creature, but this time it's gonna be well, it's gonna take a turn. It's gonna be Ravens. Okay. That's the mine, summon minor monster that also takes a whole round? Yeah, uh, I think yeah. so. Because it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. And it's 1d3 mm -hmm. uh, summon creatures. Do I roll that right away or next turn? No, w uh, when it materializes. Then cool. we'll see. Okay. okay, the tarantula is once again trying to bite Emeril. And this time, as uh, it does, it does, two more. Two more uh, duplicates of MRL appear. Ooh. So one hits you. Ooh. Okay. So Ooh. only one of the ghostly MRLs eats it. Evelyn. Yeah, she's still backing away. Oh, 42 save first. Uh, okay. Two points of strength damage. Hmm. Okay, so she's backing away from the spider. Yeah, looking very faint. Um, and she has uh, not a whole lot left in her, um, but. She's going to cast, uh, oh shoot, we're in Pathfinder, first edition. Um, has she gotten a sense of the reach of this creature? When did it, yeah, first, you, when she, did it she, attack her? She would think that she's still within reach where she is right now. Right, and casting a spell would trigger that attack of opportunity. Um, she's going to cast defensively. I don't even remember what that means. Uh, it means you avoid. You, you roll a concentration check. Okay. And you uh, need to do better than DC fifteen plus twice level. Something twice like the spell that. Level, yeah, level, so level, I, I need think, to beat yeah. seventeen. Okay. 
I'm okay. going to cast uh, Hermian Potential on Aranax just so that he doesn't miss, even though he probably couldn't have missed in the first place. But Well, okay. there's always that. Yeah. All right, sure. and uh, at the end of your turn, both Mr. Muntianu, which is a little big here in this thing, and Duristan come charging down the staircase. Um, Mr. Munchianu is armed. What kind of weapon would he carry? He right would now? have... Um, he's got a number of weapons on him, but I think in this case, as he steps up, he's going to use... Oh my god. This is the. I think this is the first time I've actually looked at his sheet. Or no, it's the <laughs> second time. But the first, first time he got paralyzed by the other bug <laughs> thing. So... <laughs> Oh my god, I've completely forgotten what he does. Uh, he's probably going to provoke an attack of opportunity? Is he yeah, that's... In? that's. Uh, but is he, uh, he, he... He might tumble down the stairs? Um, if Yeah, he, he can attempt to do that if you think he can do that and still get there in the round. Yeah. Then he'll do that. That's not going to be enough. Yeah, that's not even close. That's so fine. he still gets the attack of opportunity. He um, hold on, wait, <laughs> wait one second. Okay. Sorry. Um, he is me. going to do something about that. I think. I need to. Sorry, this is taking me a couple seconds because I need to reread everything. By the way, Simon, you, I, I believe you asked uh, us to remind uh, what uh, hero cards we were dealt in the ritual. Right. Yes. So, just in case if that something of that applies right now. Uh, no, it does help. not. It but, does not help but, me. but good call. Definitely keep that up. But it does he not. He is going to attempt. To oh god, there's a penalty for creatures that are it's legs. larger for each size category larger. Oh, Oops. <laughs> this thing's gargantuan. So yep. it's what it's what three size categories larger? Uh, large, huge, gargantuan. I believe. Yep, three. Jesus. Um. In that case, he is going to <sighs> He's gonna try to he, I mean might as well. He's gonna try to parry the attack okay. with his rapier. Okay. And then grapple it. Go for it. Oh, no. Whoa. <laughs> but it's minus that. six. But it's minus six. But that's still enough. Uh. Oh, yeah. No, it's not. It doesn't beat. I shouldn't have even bothered because literally it's not possible for him to parry. Oh, he 24. needs to beat the 24? Yeah. <sighs> I mean, it's minus six. give it to me because it's a crit, but you yeah. Know. Yeah, but the crit still has, uh, if it's not a natural 20, it still has to hit to be a crit. So. Oh, it's not a, that's right. It's, you know what, it's not a natural 20, so. Yeah. Um, Damn. He does not oh. parry it. Okay, so then he takes 32 points of damage. And needs to give me a fortitude save. Which puts him at two. <laughs> <laughs> and he is going to... Uh, he, he is going to use Charmed Life on that. Adding his charisma to his saves. Okay. So that was him. And then we have... Wow, for a massive seven. Wow. Aye, aye. <laughs> and then we have Duristan, who is um, 
has his bow, also looks like he just fell out of bed, but in contrast to everyone else, seems to be quite delighted to have this sort of entertainment. Um, and he fires an arrow, 21 hits, for uh, 5 points of damage. Uh-huh. And then it is Kreutzer's turn, who is also firing a rapid shot. When I get back to his macro, there it is. Ooh. Oh, but this time all three of them miss. What? This time all three of them miss. Oh, damn. And, and then it's the doctor's turn. I kind of hope they, they would soften him up, him up for a moment. Otherwise you have I... Hermian potential, so you you uh, I... roll twice. Well, I do roll twice, but I'm, I'm not, I don't bow down. I don't. <clears throat> I'm not doubting that I will hit it, but I'm not sure that my bomb will kill it in one shot right now. Um. Um. Okay. Hit. Huh? That's that is a hit, and the spider goes up in flames, and with a horrifying hissing sound it shrivels up drops to the floor belly up yeah, and, <clears throat> and it, Kreutzer seeing the spider go down just screams how did it get a foot that was... <laughs> and that's where we oops that's right. where we're gonna end today's session